Andrew, you have argued God from uh, the first cause, the cosmological argument. You have a book on that. Uh, the cosmological argument goes way back. Many, many philosophers have dealt with it. What are some of the original ideas that you bring to the cosmological argument? Well, one original idea is that I combine different versions of the cosmological argument into one that talks about the beginning of existence. So it is still the Kalam version, uh, but then I use insights from the Thomist tradition and also the Leibnizian con tra uh, con tradition to argue for a, for a first course of time. Okay, so just describe each of those three traditions and how you bring them together. Yeah, so um, the Thomist tradition traditionally argues for a first sustaining cause. And it argues on the basis of uh, dependencies. So for example, we can think of a series of train cars, um, and each, each of which are not moving initially. So for the last train car to begin to move, the one before it has to begin to move first. <laughs> but in order for that to begin to move, no, the one before it has to begin to move first. Now, if that's the case, then none of them will ever begin to move, right? Because everyone is dependent on the one before it, right? So what is needed is uh, what you call kind of first, uh, first engine, the first puller, right? That needs to exist first. And in order for the rest to be able to begin to move. And so what this shows is that a dependence regress is a vicious regress, right? So you need to have something that can exist, in that's independent, mm. and so that it need to exist. Mm. And so this is, uh, so I use this argument um, from the Thomist tradition to argue for a first cause um, in the sense that, uh, so for example, before I begin to exist, my parents had to begin to exist first. Now before they begin to exist, their parents had to begin to exist first. Now if that's the case, then no matter how many generations there are, none of us will actually begin to exist because everyone is dependent on the one before it. So what is required is that there must be a first indep indep independent first cause, mm -hmm. which can exist independently and uncaused. So such a first cause must exist in order that the, 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 uh, in order that other things um, can begin to exist. And how does that enhance the Kalam cosmological argument? Well, it provides another uh, 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 reason for thinking that there is a first cause. Uh, so this is one way it enhances it. And the other way it, it enhances the Kalam argument is that uh, even if the arguments against tr uh, uh, an infinity of things or transversing actual infinite, even those, ar if uh, those arguments fail, we can still prove that there must be a first cause, which starts things going. Yeah. And, 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 and how, would, how would it fail? How would the Kalam argument fail because of the nature of time uh, or infinity? Well, those, has, those have been used as objections to um, the, the premises of the Kalam. However, I don't think those objections succeed, actually. I have replied to those objections uh, in my books. Mm. So, so I think that there are actually multiple ways to prove that there is a first cause of time. Okay. Um, but my, my point here is that um, e even if those fail, right, we, we can still have this one. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, so there are, so, uh, and so I think the conclusion is un unavoidable that there must be a first cause. Yeah. And, and the Leibnizian? Well, the Leibnizian version is a contingency argument, which uh, argues from that um, things that, uh, that are dependent uh, would ultimately require something that uh, ne exists necessarily and which is uh, independent. And this version is similar to my version in the sense that I also argue from uh, the viciousness of dependence regress. Yeah. And so this shows that, uh, which, and so I, I use the insight there uh, to argue that there must be a first cause which can exist independently mm. and also necessarily, right, in that sense. Mm. And so, I, so, so my argument can also be understood as a kind of contingent, contingency argument as well. Mm. Um, but I use it for the purposes of the Kalam to show that there must be a first cause which is not only uncaused, independent and necessary, but it must also have freedom of will as well in order to be, bring about the first event. And so my argument actually is superior to the Leibnizian version and also to the Thomist version because my argument shows that this first cause is something that has free will and therefore it's a personal agent. You know, I have not met a philosopher who thinks, who, who thinks that his version is not uh, an improvement over other versions. Not, not, not a single one. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, but then again, you have to look into the details and to see rather uh, those, the, the, re the reasonings of those yeah. arguments. So it sounds like... Uh, uh, each of those arguments uh, have a large overlap, obviously, uh, among them that you uh, uh, bring together. Um, I, I would think the, the uh, weakest point of, of the argument is, uh, is, is, getting the, uh, is, is, is forcing that first cause to have a will. Um, and I think, I think the way you're arguing it is that it, it, ha it has to have a will because it has to begin the process. Uh, some people say beginning a process in an infinite 
in an infinite, uh, 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 whether timeless or, or infinite, is itself has a, an element of illogic or difficulty. So how do you begin something? Why, you know, the classic argument, why, why did it begin when it did? Why did it begin 20 minutes earlier? Uh, or 20 zillion years, if that makes sense, earlier. Yeah. I mean, because it did it, 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 it begin. And, and you're using that to say that there's a will, that there, there has to be a, a, a personhood will behind that, or else you couldn't have started the process. Yeah, but the, lo the well, logic there is that you have a will, why didn't that will do it at another, t at another moment? Well, to answer this question, first of all, you need to understand the premises of my argument. So the premises of my argument is that there cannot be an infinite regress of dependencies, right? Because it will be a vicious regress. So um, and now every event, uh, every change is something that is dependent. And so um, there cannot be an infinite uh, regress of changes and events. And therefore, there must be a first cause, which is initially without any events. And which means that in, at the initial state, there isn't any uh, uh, measurement of time, we'll call it, right? So what, what is it, 20,000 years or, or 30,000 years? Because those assume events, those assume change. Whereas, I'm argue, whereas what follows from, from the premise of my, of my argument is that there is a first cause which is initially changeless and without any events. And so, so there is, isn't any, such, any problem with, with measurement of time in that sense. And so the, so the next question is from this initial changeless state, from, from this initially changeless, changeless state, how did such a first cause bring about the first event? Mm -hmm. right? And so I argue that in order, in order to do that, the first cause must have, firstly, the capacity to originate the first events in such a way that it's not dependent on any prior events since the first cause is the first. And secondly, the first cause must also have the capacity to prevent itself from changing initially, for otherwise it wouldn't be initially changeless. Mm -hmm. Now, these two capacities <laughs> describe what um, philosophers call libertarian freedom. Mm -hmm. Or in Chinese, we can call it shou fang zi ru, <laughs> right? You can show, you can fang, right? You can refrain, but it can also initiate. And so it's a kind of freedom uh, of will, which is being described here. Mm -hmm. And so the first cause must have this freedom of will, which means that it's a personal agent, but it's not, it's not a natural law or something like that, or it's not something that can be de described as a natural law, but it's something that has libertarian freedom to bring about the first event, and therefore it's a personal creator of the universe.